Good afternoon, Team Beast. For those of you joining us for the very first time, thank you for clicking on Beast Capacity Outdoors. I'm your leader, Team Beast, Daddy Beast, and this is Beastly Gardening.
So well, that was kind of a current tour of the garden. Uh, we got quite a bit, as you can see. Um, we're getting ready to get our vine garden going where our tomatoes and squash and zucchini will go. But we are still waiting for the tree company to come out to take out that massive shade monster. Um, it's been deemed non-compliant with SCE and in accordance to power lines because as you can see power lines run right into the tree and so do the power lines for our house. So, so they have offered to remove it free of charge and sometime this week they're going to be contacting us to schedule a date and then they'll take it out and then you know we'll, we'll go to tilling under our garden bed over here it's over by the archery um, target and all that in that area by the palm little baby palm that'll all get uh, tilled under reclaimed with um, grow mulch and manure and some garden soil um, with some of that garden soil and a bag of manure and some of the grow mulch to go over into the area back over here where we will be tilling a corn rose or corn lot. Okay, so we'll start here with our greenhouse. I took the lid off here. Um, what's growing in it currently is sweet basil is coming up pretty nicely right now. We started these all from seeds. We have three of the bell pepper plants. These are the rainbow bell peppers. So red, yellow, green, and purple. Um, surprisingly, um, not all the celery came up, but we do have a ton of celery coming up right now. This is just the regular European celery, the green stalks that you buy in the state or, uh, in the stores. Um, here we have what's called ancient watermelon. I forget the full name, but it's called ancient watermelon. Um, definitely got to get these transplanted soon because, uh, yeah, they're starting to look a little weak. I got two of them planted out front. I had three um, planted out front here, but one kind of died off. I got a little stressed in super heat. I mean, they take the heat and they love to heat well, these ancient watermelons, but uh, we had a scorcher of a day a couple weeks back, and yeah, it, it killed off a few things. Like that one um, lonely cabbage plant you saw. Um, I'm hoping to create a new strain with that cabbage plant if it survives. I'm going to let it go ahead and grow to full head size. Maybe trim it a little to get it some health. And then as it, let it bolt towards the end of its season. Um, try to make it, and then take the seeds from that and hopefully that'll help produce just a little bit more genetics in that seed pot that allows it to be heat resistant more. Um, these right here are Black Beauty tomatoes. And they're not sprouting very fast or anything because I haven't done any trimming on these because I want to keep them kind of where they're at for now. Um, now I've had problems so far because we're so late in the season growing. We should have started back in January, February in the greenhouses and Jiffy Pots. But uh, we are we are now in May. And as you can see, I finally got some carrots coming up here in in our seed starters, which is not the ultimate place to do it because you're supposed to um, seed them right into the bed where you're going to grow them because they don't take to transplanting too well. But I can take some scissors and cut the biodegradable cover off of the uh, coconut core here and put them right into the dirt so it shouldn't disturb them too much at all. Um, and these are just regular standard orange variety carrots. We have in the box that I showed you earlier we have um, we have uh, rainbow carrots. Now in the seed starter pot that just failed miserably because like I said the heat just killed it. Um, we lost a lot of rainbow carrot and uh, black nebula carrot which I'm going to replant here 
now that it's cooled off again, I'm going to replant them here in the seed starters uh, once I clear this out and transplant all these. I'm going to start a black nebula line, uh, 72 pieces, because that's what's in here, in the greenhouse, the 72 pots. Um, I'm going to plant a couple seeds in each one and try to get them going, and then transplant them that way into the bed to get them to grow, um, just because. Um, ooh, I do need to trim out a couple of the tomato bushes here, as you'll see in a minute, um, before they get too big. Um, yesterday I fed them with organic feed, water-soluble feed, um, and then today uh, some of the plants were looking a little yellow, so I needed to give them their, you know, their, their Epsom salt treatment. And so they, they got that, and then I'll be watering them here soon, which takes a while, which I ain't going to show you. Because healthy watered plants keep the bugs away. And I noticed that I wasn't watering enough because of the peas. The peas told me a lot. I found one single little green, bright green inchworm, and I checked the plants. There's no other worms. There's no other bugs. Um, but it got, it got about two or three of the sun leaves off of each of the pea plants. And um, some of my uh, cauliflower and broccoli overnight. It, it really took a it took a it took a venture, and had a smorgasbord of food. But I found it, got it, got rid of it. Um, I do have a little bit of fungus growing, so I got to get the cinnamon in the bed, sprinkle the cinnamon down because it's an antifungal, and that'll help keep uh, the 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 white fungus and mushrooms out. So you know, I got a ton of mushrooms that grow every day. And not the good kind either. So I'll start over here. These aren't tomatoes, but uh, these are our green zucchini. You can tell we're getting our zucchini blossoms in. Uh, I got to get them in the ground. You can tell the leaves, if you can see it, um, are a little yellowish. They're not as dark green as like the tomatoes are here. And then right next to them are the San Marzano tomatoes. That's these ones right here. And they're growing good. I've already trimmed them a couple times. And I don't know if you can see it, but you see all those little white fuzzies. Um, and don't worry, that's just, that's some Epsom salt right there on the vine. It's not no bugs. Um, you see that little white fuzzy stuff on the stems? That is all uh, root, root material. That is all roots for the tomato plant. And so I can take it literally up to that that first set of like I can take it right up to here when I plant these in the vine garden I can take it right up to here with the dirt and they'll continue to grow but what I'll do is once I plant them I'll put them down to here in the dirt and then I'll trim these off and uh, you know give it airflow underneath it because you want a lot of airflow for tomatoes it keeps uh, the rot away from it blight and stuff like that but those are the San Marzano right behind the San Marzano right here these are uh, Cheyenne, no, I forget, they're, they're, they're pink tomatoes, I think they're Cheyenne pink tomatoes, but these, these are kind of sh small and short because I haven't trimmed them out yet, so they're kind of fighting a little bit, which is fine, a little bit of struggle on a plant is okay, um, as you tell, some are bigger than others, but I got to trim out the double seedlings in here. It's a matter of just cutting them off with a pair of scissors. And that way they don't fight. The one plant will die off. And I gotta get all these so the hardier of these I'll, I'll cut off. But So these are the pink tomatoes. And then right next to them, right here, these tall ones, are big rainbows. You know, they're big rainbow tomatoes. So these are our cutter tomatoes or slicer tomatoes. These are closer to your uh, slicer tomatoes. And the San Marzanos are your sauce ones. Two trimmers in here and they kind of, and they take out the, the pine. Then uh, we'll be transplanting those into the um, into the big garden over here, which is where our vine garden will go. And we have two four by four boxes that'll go in there to help contain um, some of the pests and stuff like that. And then we also have uh, fences that we'll be putting up. And then over here, 
is our um, herb garden. And Buddy kind of, <laughs> Buddy traipsed in it a little bit today. And he took out a few things here and there, but not too many. It's good. It, they'll grow. They'll be fine. I just got to put up a, a couple stakes and some green twine. He was trying to get up higher to look in the window thinking, hey, I need to get in. He didn't realize that the back slider was open, so it happens. But um, it allowed me to know, okay, well, there's a weak point. So, and then these are our four by four garden boxes that we'll be putting in the same company that we used for the big tall ones because you can stack them. We got two by uh, two by eights over there, two two by eights, and we stacked them. And these are our four by fours. We're not going to stack these. These are just to give a good border. And then over here. Right in this area is where we're going to be planting the corn because uh, it's going to get sun quite a bit. And we're going to have like three different uh, strains of corn. And then over here is our pickling cucumbers. We put them in a garden box. Or not a garden box, but we put them in a, in a planter bucket. It was just basically a rubbermaid bucket with no lid. Put some holes in the bottom of it so that it drains. And uh, they're a little bit yellow right now, so I had to feed them. Uh, a little bit of the um, Epsom water, which is just a couple tablespoons of Epsom salt into a gallon of water. And so I took the two gallon jug and swamped it really good. So these guys will be picking up in a few days. Um, and they really go through a lot of water. Cucumbers really love water. So I'm going to go ahead and get to watering here in a minute. I'll when I'm done with that, I'll be back and I'll show you the front and then we'll close out. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Dark brown mulch tea at the bottom of the box. Good water saturation of the dirt. Cucumbers love their water. Through there? Yeah. Oh, right. um, is that yours or mine? Probably mine. You uh. walked through that box? Yeah, right on top, just like this. I think what it was is he was looking to get up a little higher to look in the window to get somebody's attention to let him in. Our mystery seeds are growing mm. pretty well. Hello, dear. Hello. Oh, ooh, excuse me. Oh, yeah. So, we're done for the watering. It takes a long time because you got to flood water it. And especially with those boxes. I mean, those are huge, tall boxes. Those are like 22 inches high. Those are, yeah, no, 21, 21 and a half inches high. Because they're like 10 and 3 quarters each. And we got them stacked on top of each other. So, it's takes a lot of water to get down to where you get the mulch tea coming out the bottom of those. The garden, that, that one over there, which is, <laughs> you saw me earlier putting cord and string and post it. Now we're putting up a buddy fence <laughs> so he doesn't crawl into the box. But uh, that was so we, um, or those boxes, uh, the mulch tea comes out pretty quick because there's not that much. There's only, I think, 11 inches in that box tall. And it's all, that's an unstackable from the same company 
as the cedar boards uh, ones here. These are the rough ones. We, these are the cheaper ones. These were, I think, just cost like 100 and, 125, 130 bucks for the two boxes. They're two by eight. And then we got two of them. You just stack them. And they stack real nice because they slide into each other. Um, there's a center post that goes across um, at the four foot mark. They bow a little bit, but the, the bigger, thicker board, the I think they're like $94 from Home Depot for the big one, the thicker boards. That's what the 4x4s are. They got the thicker boards. These are half-inch slats, so they tend to bow a little bit when you stack them, but no biggie. But yeah, that's it for the day. It's been a long video. I figured this one would. It's an introductory of the Beastly Gardening video. Um... There'll be more. Um, oh, yeah. I was talking about antifungals and all the mushrooms i got to pick out of there every day. Cinnamon. Ground cinnamon. It's an antifungal. Um, you can also use, like, okay, if you get the white fuzz, if you're growing squashes and stuff on the ground, you can get a white fuzz, a white mold kind of thing. Um, just clip those leaves off is the best bet to do. Otherwise, it'll just keep coming back. And then you can sprinkle what well, my mom had said because she she's been in gardening forever. We grew up around gardening on ranch and yeah, years of gardening. Um, one of the things you, my mom says it all the time is cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. Just sprinkle it around the ground, and that helps keep the fungus away. It helps like dry out something or another, whatever it does. But the cinnamon is an antifungal as well. And you just when you do your seedlings, you sprinkle the cinnamon on top. You don't have to go heavier or nothing. And then once they start sprouting and you transplant, you do it again. And that keeps fungus down. So that's what's that at. But anyhow, appreciate you guys stopping by. Clicking on Beast Capacity. She's reading a book. She got her book time coming in. But as you can see, we're, we were all outside a little bit ago. Um, Cody's cooking dinner. Mom's in there chilling. It smells like an Italian restaurant right now. But it's been cool outside, and it's been a good thing because I've been having issues growing carrots, like a son of a gun. Granted, it's a little late in the season, so it's a little bit hotter, and they don't like the heat all that much. They like cooler weather. But now that we've had a cool spell for the last two weeks, two and a half weeks, um, we're roughly staying about in the 70, 75. So they're starting to sprout up. The lettuce, which has been struggling, is really sprouting uh, well now, or growing well. I'm starting to see some crowns growing. The the, the herb box, it's growing good. Um, the living cucumbers with our mystery seeds. Mystery seeds just like came up one day. And that was originally the bucket that I was really flooding a lot. Um, and Mother Nature will tell you when you really need to water. Like, if you have healthy green plants that are watered well, you won't see bugs. Bugs come in when the stuff's dying to clear it out. Um, so if you keep them nice and well watered and happy, they're not going to come up. Yeah, the bugs aren't going to be there. And so I saw bugs on the peas, cleared them out, got it deeply, more deeply watering. I wasn't flood watering it enough, the big boxes. Now I know, so it takes a lot longer to water. Um, but yeah, the flood watering on the little bucket, the deck bucket, uh, where the lemon cucumbers are. And we found seeds in the bottom of our jar. We keep our seeds for the most part, in tall quart mason jars. It helps keep them sealed fresh so they don't go bad on you sitting in a, in a shelf in a box somewhere in their bag. Um, with the seeds, you know, in a mason jar. And if you really need to, and, and you're going to, you're very seasonal and you, um, and if you're seasonal and you're, and you're down to where, okay, I got a couple, few months before I'm going to be planting my seedlings again. And you have a vacuum sealer, dude. Throw your throw your seeds in a vacuum seal pouch, seal them up, and suck the air out of them. That'll help uh, keep the fresh, keep them fresh, and keep them from going bad. Because if you leave them in the air, it oxidizes them, it kills them, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And then you won't get as much germination. So, if you're gonna have a holdover set of seeds, um, vacuum seal them. That's what I'm gonna end up doing here um, with my. Uh, summer seeds. I'm going to start vacuum sealing those till yeah, thereabouts um, August, September. I'll vacuum seal the hot, uh, hot month um, seeds 
a vacuum seal them so I can put them in storage for a while, um, which would just be inside, you know, our house. Um, cool, dry, dark, that kind of thing. And then, uh, yeah. And then, of course, um, come the beginning of the year, we'll redo the boxes. So, hello, Pan. Hello. hello. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us today at Beastly Gardening. And the introduction. So, yes, this is a hellaciously long one compared to the 10 minute books that you've been getting from me, um, which is very abnormal because normally this is how long they run. Ask anybody and watch any of my videos, you'll see I run 20, 30, 40 minutes sometimes. I've been keeping them down to 10. So, this one's a little long, it's an introductory, but most of the other ones will be shorter. So, as always, wear the mask when you go out. It's a hassle, but you know what? You're protecting your fellow human beings. It's thinking of the fellow human beings out there and humanity by wearing your mask when you go out and, you know, travel around and go to the grocery store and just get out so you're not cabin fevered anymore. You know, that's all it is. You're, you're, you're keeping your stuff out of everybody else's face. Yeah, it sucks to wear it. But hey, if nurses and doctors can do it for eight hours a day, we can do it for an hour or two when we go outside. And you know what? And as soon as this crap goes away... We'll be back to doing the bullshit we did before. So, as always, be good, be kind, Team Beast, all the way.